Okay, so in the previous video we estimated the Taylor rule for the Greenspan period and what we might do is just look at that data again and let's paste. So, and also let's set up what we had previously. We had um, increased pain, tax claim amount of fees, let's undo that. Unfreeze and bring here and do it again. Freeze pain. Okay, so uh, the top, the headers, if you like, uh, remain the same. Now we have data for the Taylor rule. What we'd like to do is let's move this to one side for a second. So let's just uh, insert. Shift cells right and maybe make a little bit more space. Uh, insert shift cells right. So both the Taylor rule coefficients and Greenspan uh, coefficients a little bit separate. And we might look at the fit. So again, starting from if we look at the regression, the start date was here 87, 10, 1. So let's Let's make a fit here. Okay, and so to make the fit, uh, what we could do is parameterize. We could say, let's take this uh, A and we can dollarize it. So to lock the cell reference, and we're going to multiply that by the actual. So uh, as it's just a constant. And then we take B2 or B1. And again, the same way uh, we lock the cell reference. So we use the dollar sign and we're going to multiply that specifically by the value here for inflation. So multiply by the value for inflation, which is this one. And then last of all, we say plus B2 and we dollarize and we're going to multiply so that we're taking that coefficient and multiplying by the actual observation for output gap okay and let's see multiply by this value here and that would say that the Using the Greenspan uh, coefficients, so let's say Greenspan fit, Greenspan fit. So we're taking the coefficients from the Greenspan period, his uh, reaction function, and with the these uh, with that level level of inflation and that level of growth cap. Greenspan would have had interest rates on average at about 7.3, which is a little bit higher than the actual. So let's take that and we'll pull down and we'll bring it up to 2006. 2006, the first quarter. 2006, one more. And we can have a look at, at the reaction function. So let's just uh, visualize uh, this. Um, in fact, before we do that, maybe we'll set up the Taylor rule. Okay, so again, we could take this relationship again. We could copy it, escape and paste again, home paste. And instead of taking 135, we could take the values at 132. So you'll notice here 132, 132, 132. And that parameter, right, that so we have the Taylor rule coefficients. Okay, and so Taylor rule. 
So Greenspan was a little bit more relaxed uh, than the actual Taylor rule fit. So what the, f the Fed funds rate would have been if it stuck solidly, rigidly to the Taylor rule. Okay, and let's take that and bring it all the way down. Okay, and 6.3. And we have the actual Fed funds to compare against. Okay, so what we can do is we can look at all three and compare, right? So we could visualize this. So let's go to insert. Uh, let's save this first of all. And let's have a look at, uh, just visualize what we have set up here. So let's go to insert and let's take the line, take any one line and let's uh, select data and add and actual fed funds and then uh, the actual fed funds so we start from 19 last quarter or let's see yes last quarter 1987 so take this value up to 2006 first quarter So this period here and click OK and then we'll edit and we'll use the the dates as being just for the x-axis just to describe each observation as opposed to representing them as one two three so that's 1987 last quarter okay and we hit OK. And OK. OK, now what in addition we'd like to see is the green span. How does the green span reaction function? So let's uh, select data and add green span fit. And take the data from again so the green span fit let's come down one green span fit down to 2006 and we hit okay and let's just eyeball this for a moment and um so this is the reaction fund this is the actual fed fund rate and this is what on average would have been the policy would appear so the greenspan fit represents if you like an averaging out of policy reactions and you can see that in the early period greenspan was much more aggressive in the 92 period uh, 98 1987 to 1992 greenspan the actual greenspan in the flesh the FOMC committee that actually set the policy rate put rates much higher than what uh, Greenspan would have done. But we noticed that in uh, the early period, in the early 2000s, the actual Fed funds rate here was kept much lower. So the true Fed fund rate, Greenspan, the true Greenspan period, reacted much more sluggishly uh, from 2004 to 2006. Okay, so that's a, an int interesting type of uh, observation that the uh, the Fed Reserve was uh, more accommodative, and it's true during the period uh, prior to two thousand six, uh, Greenspan uh, referred to deflation risk uh, and was resistant to raising interest rates and this may also explain why there was such a rapid run up in asset prices in the early 2000s to 2006 and perhaps also contributed to uh, the correction then that subsequently happened in terms of housing interest rates are kept quite low relative to uh, the of the average policy response um, and that's clear okay let's add on add in one more series so let's select data and add what the taylor rule would have offered Taylor rule fit 
and again go back and let's have a look at this and the tailor rule fit we worked out and hit OK and OK and let's go back again and again uh, okay so what we see with the uh, Taylor Taylor would have somewhere between so maybe we can increase them just bring this over okay and bring it back okay what can we offer here in terms of interpretation of setting the fed funds rate uh, Taylor was somewhere in between. The, the Taylor rule would suggest policy would have been more accommodative than uh, the way rates were set. But again, what we might... I mean, an insight here was that Greenspan took up the FOMC chairmanship after Paul Volcker and potentially this actual Fed fund rate reflects a little bit the culture of the previous FOMC which was very aggressive inflation. Uh, the Taylor rule fit, so the actual Fed funds rate was high. Taylor rule would have said not, didn't need to be so high. Uh, the Greenspan reaction, if you take Greenspan in terms of overall fit for the period, would have been more accommodative. Uh, there was a coalescing during this 94 period, 90 to 94, 90 to 91. Rates were cut substantially, reflecting the fall an output and the US going into recession and uh, the actual Fed funds rate was much more accommodative here than either the Taylor rule or Greenspan would have been on average uh, but where it becomes quite remarkable the difference uh, is again from the 2001 from 9-11 policy the actual policy the FOMC cut rates and kept rates low for a substantially longer period than that uh, which the average Greenspan reaction would have uh, suggested and def definitely much more accommodative than the, the what Taylor rule the Taylor rule would have suggested so the Taylor rule would have suggested interest rates would have been much higher interest rates would have been increased uh, much swiftly than what actually occurred and this might offer also an insight into how asset prices uh, increased uh, dramatically up to the 2006-2007 uh, financial crisis and also uh, this type of analysis is in line with uh, papers subsequently done and books written by uh, John B. Taylor um, one that comes to mind is Getting Off Track, uh, and he also has a 2007 paper to, which outlines this effect of the Fed funds rate being kept artificially uh, low for a prolonged period of time, and this may have been a contributor to uh, the financial crisis. Uh, this, this type of analysis this is what the Taylor rule tends to offer, that we can construct benchmarks against which we compare actual policy rate setting. Uh, some of the analysis here obviously a little bit flawed because um, uh, the measures of inflation that government tracked may have differed. Uh, in no uh, in official inflation target was announced uh, that only came in the, the Bernanke period. Uh, the growth gap estimation may not the actual data confronting Fed funds, uh, FOMC committee, uh, data was substantially revised. Um, so some of the analysis here, obviously, a uh, little uh, needs to be uh, refined. But we can construct a benchmark, and the benchmark might offer uh, useful insights. So in the next video clip. Um, will update the uh, rate setting for more recent time period and consider uh, monetary targeting quantitative easing.